Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at ISCT 2017 in London. Cell therapy has been hailed as a potential treatment for chronic disease patients, including oncology. And Cell Medica is a company industrializing cell therapy to increase accessibility and affordability for these patients. On the show today, I have Kurt Gunter, Chief Medical Officer of Cell Medica. Welcome. Thank you, Summer. It's a pleasure to be here. So today we'll be talking about the industrialization of cell therapy with a patient in mind. Tell us about what you're doing at Cell Medica and how this message comes across through your work. Well, at Cell Medica, we like to think we're transforming patients' lives through the power of cellular immune therapy. Now, those are very lofty words, but what it really means is we're trying to use the immune system of the patient to treat and hopefully cure cancer. I understand that you're developing and commercializing immunotherapy or cellular immunotherapy for cancers and other chronic diseases. Could you walk us through your technology a little bit? So we have uh, three different platforms at, at Cell Medica and three different collaborations with very high quality academic groups. Our first platform uses T lymphocytes, which, uh, which is a normal immune cell found in the body to treat viral associated cancers. And, and most people don't know this, but many cancers around the world are caused by different viruses. And viruses are an excellent target to attack a tumor because viruses aren't normally present in the other healthy tissues. So that's our first program and that's in phase two. And then we have more um, earlier stage programs with more advanced technology one uses a, what's called a chimeric antigen receptor for a T cell. I'm sure you're familiar with that. And this actually enables T cells to better target tumor antigens. But we use a unique lymphocyte called an NKT cell to deliver that product to tumors. And that's a collaboration we have with the Baylor College of Medicine. And then we also have a third technology which uses another T cell receptor uh, this is a molecule that's been engineered to be a very strong or dominant T-cell receptor. And this is technology we have through uh, University College London, here in London. And that'll be moving into clinical trials rather soon. And I noticed that your lead product, your lead candidate, has recently been granted the FDA fast track status. What does that mean for the company? Does that mean you can deliver the, the products sooner to the patients that need them? Well, we hope so. It, um, it does mean that we do get more attention and hopefully responsiveness from the FDA. We'll still have to meet the standard safety and efficacy standards, so there's no shortcuts in that sense, but the FDA will be more available to us. Uh, it also enables us, when we submit a marketing authorization application to FDA, uh, to get more likely to get what's called a priority review or a, a shorter review period. Cell therapy is a very risky, high-risk area, and you have three big programs within your R&D remit. And inevitably, that's going to be quite costly. So you recently closed the £60 million Series C investment round. How do you convince your investors to put money into your company when well, it's so high risk? Yes, it's a, it's a good question, and our investors um, think that I'm the biggest spender in the company because I'm in charge of clinical operations and we do spend a lot of money in <laughs> clinical trials and it, it's not getting any cheaper, that's for sure. Uh, but I will say this about not just our, especially our investors, but all investors in general are very sophisticated these days and, and they know this is high risk and they also understand this is high reward. And as you, we go back to some of the things I mentioned at the beginning, these therapies have the potential to cure patients and get away from the chemotherapy and the, the weed killers that we use to treat cancer now. If you think about it, chemotherapy was developed initially as a chemical agent in World War I. And those alkylating agents became the bedrock for the treatment of cancers throughout the 20th century. Well, we're in the 21st century now and with cellular, immune therapies and other types of immune therapies, we're learning that there's much less toxic ways to control cancer. And I think that's what our investors and a lot of people 
are quite excited about. When we talk about cell therapy, you hear about autologous versus allogeneic cell therapy. And I'm sure Cell Medic has thought about this and you've made decisions based on your thought processes. Where do you think is the switch, um, s switch point in terms of cost effectiveness between the two options? And how have you made your decision? The switch point really depends on the level of efficacy you can show. So at our company, and I think other companies, aren't committed necessarily to saying autologous is the best or allogeneic is the best. We in fact have both programs in our company and we're going to, based on the signals we get in preclinical and clinical trials, develop the one that we think works the best and is the safest and most effective. Uh, so that's how we'll make that decision. The higher the efficacy uh, signal and the better the safety, that'll be the product we go with because we think that'll be the highest value product. Now, having said all that, let's just say theoretically, if I had an autologous product and an allogeneic product, the safety was the same and the efficacy signals were the same, chances are I'd want to go with that allogeneic product because the logistical supply chain will be simpler and I'm guessing the cost of goods would probably be a little less uh, uh, complex or expensive. Now, we're talking about industrializing cell therapy with the patient as the core to all the processes. How does your therapy fit into the current clinical and diagnostic pathway? Well, I think, you know, it's not just about us. It's in, and this is, again, the 21st century, last I checked. And we're getting to the point that we're realizing that all cancers have unique properties in most patients. So they have unique mutations, so-called neoantigens or, or unique mutations. And uh, what is necessary in almost any kind of cancer therapy these days is to do some kind of testing on the patient's tumor to get a tumor phenotype and also a tumor genotype so that you can better target uh, any therapy to the patient. And that goes for cell therapy. For example, with our um, viral directed cell therapy. Our lead program is in Epstein-Barr virus uh, expressing tumors and in that case we need to demonstrate that there is virus on that tumor surface otherwise our products won't work. And that goes for all kinds of cellular therapies so we need to test that patient's tumor uh, and that's only one part of industrializing with the patient in mind. And are you currently collaborating with diagnostics companies to develop the diagnostic tool or are you doing it yourselves? Um, that's a very good question. Most, most of these products that are so-called targeted therapies, whether they be cell therapies or they be small molecules or antibodies, often are going to need a, a, a diagnostic. Companion diagnostic. It, yeah, in, in the FDA they call that a companion diagnostic. Mm -hmm. And smaller companies like us, the best model for that is probably to collaborate with someone who knows how to develop devices, and that's what we're doing. Great. And on the point of delivering products to patients, when you're thinking about logistics and supply chain, you know, from the procurement of raw materials for your products, for your assets, to delivering the goods to the patients, how does that all work? Have you, or have you already thought of that? or? Sure, we spend hours <laughs> agonizing about that. And in, you know, in clinical trials, it's a, you know, and also in the commercial model, when we get there, it'll be a full service, seamless operation. So for example, the patient makes an appointment, we provide all the collection materials. Let's assume this is an autologous therapy. So we collect the starting material from the patient. We ship all that to the physician's office or clinic and that material is collected, we provide the shipping container, it's shipped to our manufacturing facility, we make it, we ship it back. The, the key thing is to coordinate the delivery time because sometimes our product is being administered in conjunction with other therapies and that's kind of the trend in oncology now is combination therapies. So for example, if our product has to be given three days after, say, an antibody, you want to make sure you coordinate that care. And that actually is the most critical aspect, I think, is coordinating the individual patient's care and shipping stuff around. That's been done for decades now, so shipping cells around is not a big deal. 
but coordinating the patient care is a very big deal. And lastly, you, you're quite heavily involved with the ISCT, the International Society of Cell Therapy. Tell us a bit about your involvement. Well, I, I really like working with the I, ISCT. It's our 25th year. It's our Jubilee celebration here at this meeting. So we're probably going to party a little bit, but we're going to have some real science here. We're a, a global, a truly global society composed of members from industry, regulators, uh, technicians, and also clinical people. And our mission is to improve patients' lives uh, through the translation of cellular therapy into safe and effective therapies. So it's really a pleasure to be here with all my colleagues. And even though I have you know, competing companies within ISCT, it's a close-knit community. And we work closely together because the people in ISCT, we're working for the patient. Uh, so Kurt, thank you very much for being on the show today. Hopefully in the next few years we'll see a cell therapy product from Cell Medica saving millions of lives around the world. Well thank you Summer, it was a pleasure to be here and I share that vision with you. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.